What is going on, all you Pokemon collecting maniacs out there? This is Ryan, the Pika Pika Paw Paw, every single Sunday. For I don't know how long now, we have done the movers and shakers list here on the channel. And this is where TCG Player gives us the list of the cards that have been moving the most on their platform over the last week. Now, we're not doing that today. We're doing something totally different, but I am in Spain. Matter of fact, by the time you watch this, I'm actually flying back from Spain with my family. So if I'm not overly jet lagged, then tomorrow on Monday, I will shoot the movers and shakers list because I think it's really cool and I wanna keep doing that. We learn so much every single week when we do that video and I feel awful that I can't get it to you. But hey, listen, my sister's getting married. We're going to Spain, we're gonna have a great time. Uh, and then I will try and do it on Monday for you. But I am equally excited about this content. This is a video I have wanted to do for quite quite a while. You know, this is a video where uh, it doesn't matter when it's launched because the content is relevant in any time. So I thought it'd be good to do uh, while I'm out of out of the country. And what we're going to talk about today is PSA has made some updates, some significant updates uh, to its terms and conditions. And as I go through this and I read to you what the updates are, they might not seem like big updates individually, but I think what's exciting to me is when you put them all together, conceptually what PSA is trying to put themselves in position to be able to do and what PSA is trying to do, I think is going to have a huge impact for all of us uh, in the grading space. And I know we are all leveled up collectors and investors here. So obviously we are a big part of the grading community. So I thought this would be really cool uh, to talk through. So guess what? Not a ton of slides today. This is going to be one of those fireside chats with Pika Pika Papa. So I'm going to start off with the very first thing. And this thing to me makes absolutely all the sense in the world. And one of the updates that they announced uh, was that now, if you know this or not, when you submit your cards to PSA, you submit them at a certain grading level, right? They might say value bulk is all, all cards up to $499 in value. Well, if you submit it at that level and then after grading it is higher than that price, PSA will reach out to you via email and they will say, hey, guess what? We have to upcharge you to a higher service level because your card is now worth more than that $499 threshold. Now, for me, that is always a good thing. Like getting those emails from PSA is like Christmas come early because that obviously means you have a very high value card uh, in your submission. However, the way they do it now is they send you an email uh, and you have to give them a credit card. You have to do the, the work. You have to go ahead and go in there uh, and pay the additional fee before they will go ahead and finalize your submission and send you the cards. And the big update that they said is now they are going to automatically charge your credit card for grading up charges that are $500 or less. And to be honest with you, I don't see why anybody in the world would have a problem with this. I don't know if there's anybody who has said, you know what? I'm not gonna pay the upcharge. Like, my card is more valuable than I thought. I don't wanna pay the extra 30, 40, 50, whatever, whatever it is dollars uh, to actually get my card back from PSA. So. There will be some hangups, right? Obviously cards might expire or there could be these one offsets, but the reality is this should speed up the time it takes for you to get your cards back. I was talking to somebody the other day uh, and they, they said they actually reached out to PSA because it had been months since they got their cards back. And they're like, hey, what's going on? Where are my cards at? And PSA said, well, we've sent you three different emails telling you that you have an upcharge and you need to pay it. And the guy said, oh, well, of course I'm gonna pay it. So anyways, I think this is going to cut down on a whole lot of that. And at the same time, it's going to add efficiency to PSA, right? And that is a good thing. Those of us who submit to PSA, we want to impart as many efficiencies as we can. And again, this isn't something that anybody in their right mind would say no to. So I'm very, very excited for this. And I think it's just going to streamline the process a whole lot. Now, this is not in effect right now. PSA came out and said, listen, this is in the new terms and conditions. However, we will make a big announcement to everybody before this becomes official official. So that is very good news. Now, not that anybody again would say no to it, but just so you know, there will be a more formal, larger announcement on this uh, prior to the actual implementation. The next thing, and I think this is really cool too, is PSA, maybe it's not really cool. Actually, it is really cool. I'm gonna go back and say that. Uh, PSA is now going to charge you a fee if you ship cards to them that are not in their preferred card savers one. Now, again, this is not enacted yet, right? The fees haven't even been determined yet, but what's got me most excited about this isn't the fees, right? Now, the idea of fees and something like this, it's not to generate revenue. What it is, it's to disincent a behavior. They're trying to disincent the behavior of sending cards in that are not in card saver one holders. Now, why in God's name would they do that? Well, PSA is trying to implement new technology to speed up the intake process and the technology and the um, machines that they are going to be using. Again, this is going to be only compatible with card saver one. So PSA is trying to speed up the intake process. Remember, they're grading like 1 1.2, 1 1.3 million cards 
per month. That is an insane number of cards. And so they are trying to drive streamline. They're trying to drive efficiencies. And so they're putting in new technology. Again, it only works with this. So they're going to put some kind of, you know, slap on the wrist fee. So if you don't do that, you're going to break the system, not break the system, but you're going to throw a monkey wrench in the gears and they're going to have to process your order differently. So they're going to charge you a fee for that in, uh, incurred inefficiencies. Now, I know at first I was thinking about this and I'm picturing this machine with all of these gears and my poor cards and their card saver ones just flying through a conveyor belt and these, these I don't know, sharp razor's edge things just coming down and slicing the things apart. It's not, it can't be like that, right? Now, we all know that when PSA intakes cards, they send you an image of the card as they intake it. So at least you have some visual representation of the condition of the card uh, when it gets there. There are off chances. I hear about it from time to time more cards get damaged at PSA. And again, when you're grading 1.2, 1.3 million cards a month, accidents are going to happen. There is no zero tolerance system, right? Like accidents are going to happen. Uh, so at first I was like, oh my gosh, I can't imagine this whirling, twirling machine that my cards are going to go through. But I have a feeling that uh, that was just the panicked collector in me. And again, at the end of the day, if they can efficiently increase the way they intake cards, I am all for that upside. The next thing, and this is really interesting because I don't I don't know, I didn't know it was prevalent enough uh, in this hobby for them to actually come out and have very strong language around this, but they are taking a very, very strong and aggressive stance uh, on card cleaning. So if you don't know this, you can buy different products out there, and if you have a card and it's got scratches on it, uh, you can clean it, and supposedly, I've never used it, but supposedly it will remove the scratches or something. I don't know, they call it cleaning, they call it waxing, uh, and there has been lots of debate for a long time uh, about if that is ethical or not. You know, if you have a card and you clean it like that, does it alter? Is it no longer in an original state? And I'm sure a lot of you who are watching this have a very strong opinion uh, one way or the other. But PSA has kind of been neutral on this for the longest time, but they have come out and I mean, the language in there is stupid aggressive and it's probably just the CYA moment. Like they're not actually going to do this, but they talk about, they could actually get litigious with you. Like they can ban you from grading. They can remove um, the cards that you've sent in. They can send them back to you and say, no, we're not going to do this. They can actually, you know, press legal charges against you for doing that. And now again, there's no way they could actually come through with that. You could very easily say, I bought this card on eBay. I had no clue it was, you know, altered or whatever. So again, they're just putting the language in there more as a deterrent and more as a CIA or CYA than anything anything else. But I did think it was interesting that PSA has finally kind of planted a flag in the sand on that. And if there was a gun to my head and somebody said, hey, listen, we need you to pick is card cleaning, you know, the right thing or the wrong thing. You know, I'm kind of on the anti card cleaning side of things. I don't know. I, but again, I could hear both sides of it. So when you think about everything that they're putting in, these are the three big points. There was a lot more in it uh, besides this, but these were the three that I thought was most relevant to all of us out here uh, who are actively grading and buying PSA grading cards, right? Like if you care about your card being original and unaltered, you probably feel really good about PSA now taking a strong stance on this. And if you send a lot of cards to PSA, uh, you probably want efficiencies in because all of us want cards back. I've got a huge submission. Some of my most expensive Pokemon cards I've ever sent to PSA have been sitting in stage three for like two months now, and I desperately want them back. But the whole point of this, and if you've never ever heard, you know, the president of CEO or CEO of PSA speak, first off, he is all about the collectors. The guy's great. And I know that there's a lot of people who PSA kind of is what it is, but his goal, and he has said this on numerous times, he would love to get the grading price to $10. He would love to get this value bulk rating to $10 per card. And the reason he wants to do that is because he wants people who have want to have an entire set of PSA graded cards uh, it, to be more approachable from a pricing perspective, right? Because you can't do it at $20 a card, but at $10 a card, if you have a set that's got 350 cards in it, you know, it's still going to cost you a whole lot of money, but at the $10 price point, it's much more approachable. And he has also said he wants to get PSA to the point where their turnaround time is 30 30 days or less, no matter what service you get. And again, this isn't just, this is about throughput for them, okay? Because the faster the turnaround times are, the more cards that are gonna hit the market, the more cards that are gonna get graded. Like, so there's a lot of upside to PSA uh, in both of these statements, but I also think that it's really good for the collector out there. So. When you think about the fact that they won't be able to hold, they won't be holding as many cards, right? Because they're gonna auto charge the credit cards. So they'll be able to get those out of the system and out of their warehouses much faster instead of waiting on people to respond to emails and pay those uh, upcharge fees independently. Uh, they're going to, you know, disincent people from sending in cards outside of these card saver one sleeves because they're gonna impart new technology, which is gonna help with the intake. It's gonna help get cards through the system faster. Like all of this is about doing faster turnaround time. So I have 
have no problem with any of these updates. Matter of fact, as a long-term uh, Pokemon collector and as a long-term sports card collector, uh, I'm actually in favor of all of them. I think these are going to be nothing but good things for the hobby. However, I'm sure a lot of you have your own thoughts and opinions. So let me know what you think about PSA's newest terms and conditions updates in the comments down below. As I said, I am hoping that tomorrow I will be able to get that Movers and Shakers video out to you guys. I just love the content so much. And if you made it to the end and you enjoyed this content, we do fun stuff like this all the time in the Pokemon collecting and investing space. So hit that subscribe button. If you have questions, comments, drop them down below. And as always, if you like what you see, give us a big old thumbs up. I appreciate you more than I can say. Hope you guys have an epic one. Talk to you soon. See you everybody. Bye.